Welcome back to The Graham Stephan Show. And today we answer the age-old question, is the market about to crash? Where could you place your money to get the highest returns possible if you want to get rich? And how could you optimize your finances to build wealth long-term? And that brings us to this video from Dave Ramsey. Is the market about to correct? So I want to comment on this as soon as you hit the like button and subscribe, because I have a feeling this could wind up saving you a lot of money. Oh, and also, a big thank you to Nextiva for sponsoring this video, but more on that later. I'm investing heavy right now, and I feel like it's so overinflated at the moment. Being that I'm not completely out, I have significant money in right now, would it be wise to, to just collect 5% in the money market and wait for a correction? Here's the thing. The market is always a little bit forward thinking. The market always seems to trade a little bit beyond where it should. Why is that? Well, you know what? The stock market is not the economy. What you see going on day to day is really very little reflection of where the stock market trades at. Sometimes it makes absolutely no sense. Sometimes the stock market looks overinflated and it keeps going even higher. It defies logic. Like you would think, just like gravity, eventually it has to come back down. And it doesn't. And it's so unbelievably frustrating. And then sometimes everything seems great and the stock market is trading at a low. And you're thinking, what, what, why? It makes no sense. I think once you begin to look at stock prices differently and that you know, whatever they're trading at really has no resemblance on what's actually going on, you start to look at it objectively. And this is how you could make the most amount of money possible. Just keep watching. If you had called me five years ago and I said, oh, yeah, yeah, we're getting ready to have a correction, you would have missed out on a 90% rate of return. You're, in the last five years in the S&P 500, your money has doubled. In 22, the market was down overall. In 23, it was up 27%. It's up 18% already this year. Yeah, see, this is exactly one of the reasons why you just can't time the market. And that's also one of the reasons why my best strategy that I've been using for really the last like 10 years is just buying in consistently regardless of where it's trading it. If the market's up, fine. If the market's down, I see that as, oh, great, well, I'm getting a bit of a discount. And that's it. I really just don't pay attention to the pricing or what's going on because at the end of the day, anything can happen. Like you would think with COVID, it's a great example. The market is going to a standstill. And then what happens? The Fed comes in with their money printer. They inject the economy with trillions of dollars and everything shoots back up and doubles in price. You just can't predict what is going to happen. I'm sure there's going to be times in the future, by the way, where the market goes down and everyone's expecting, ooh, the Fed's going to come in. The Fed's going to come in and save us. And they don't. And the market goes down even further. So at the end of the day, the only thing you have control over is to make sure that you have a consistent source of income that you keep investing on a regular basis and then you just let time do its thing. You don't price Apple stock based on a wish and a prayer. They actually make stuff and make a profit and you can use those numbers to determine the value of the company and therefore the value of the stock and that's where this is coming from. It's coming from the prosperity of these companies, George. You know what's really interesting, actually? In 2018, I did a video about the stock market and how so many people felt like the stock market was overvalued when it hit 3,000. I'm talking about the S&P 500. It hit 3,000 for the first time ever. And everyone is thinking, no way, I can't believe it. it. It more than doubled from the bottom of the economy. What's going on? Is it safe to invest? The market's got to correct at this time. And I remember just saying, listen, long term, no matter what happens in the short term, long term, the stock market has gone up. Over a 20-year period, no one has ever lost money. So far, we could, you know, knock on wood, I'm sure. Maybe at some point in the future that might be a positive. I don't know. But long term, over a 20-year period, the stock market has always produced a positive return. So even when it hits 5,000, oh, the stock market's overvalued. I'm sure one day it'll hit 8,000. People are like, oh, it's so overvalued. And then I'm sure one day it'll hit 10,000. And people will say the same thing. Oh, it's so overvalued. Long term, all you could do is just dollar cost average. And like I said, it's really important to keep a consistent income. And it's one of the reasons why I always recommend keeping a side hustle, working extra hours, having some extra savings, do whatever you can so that that way, if the market does correct at some point, keep buying it. And what's amazing, Steve, if you actually look at the data, if you go look at right now, the S&P 500 returns, you know, the last major dip was COVID. And guess what? March 2020 was the dip. It came back in July, back to record highs. It's not about timing the market. It's about time in the market. And the best investors out there are the average ones who just let it ride. Well, really, the last downturn that we saw occurred in 2021. 
That was when the money printers were on full force, speculation was rampant, everyone was buying into these tech companies with no regard to fundamentals. I mean, this is when a lot of these companies were trading at like $400 a share, whereas like today they're like $2 a share. Everyone was getting ahead of themselves. GameStop was like, you know, the biggest thing on earth. And we could see that the S&P 500 really went from about 4,800 down to 35. You know, this is also exactly why I always recommend having a side hustle or something else you're doing outside of business hours to supplement your income. And this is also why having good customer service and a dedicated business line is so important. Like as a business owner, it could be very difficult to transition from being an amateur to a professional, especially when you're used to doing everything yourself. For instance, when I was working as a real estate agent, I would often get business calls on my personal line. People would reach out from multiple different sources. Some of them would get missed. And at the end of the day, I don't always feel comfortable giving out my personal information to someone I just met. Thankfully though, if you're a business owner or you want to be a business owner and make sure these mistakes don't happen to you or your customers, then our sponsor Nextiva is there to help. Nextiva consolidates your business voice, text, video meetings, and CRM inside of one app so that way you could get seamless, personalized customer interactions across all channels. As an example of this, if you're on the phone with a customer using Nextiva, you'll be able to take notes on the call, text that customer, schedule a video meeting and then join that meeting all from the same view. Basically, they're able to take what would normally be four apps and combine them into one for a fraction of the cost, with Nextiva customers reporting up to a 60% savings rate on their phone bill after switching. Nextiva makes life easier, so you could focus more on growing your business and scaling it. Not to mention, you could do this even if you're running your business off a personal line and your CRM is a spreadsheet. You don't need any tech experience, all you gotta do is download the app and follow their easy setup. With literally just one change, you and your business could look as polished as a Fortune 500 company with more time left over to actually grow and work on your business without worrying about customers falling through the cracks. So if you'd like to try it out for yourself and give it a shot, go to trynextiva.com slash gram or use the link down below in the description for 50% off your plan. Again, that's trynextiva.com slash gram with the link in the description to get started today. And now with that said, Let's get back to the video. All the data tells us that someone who has a good broker in their corner, not somebody who's a shyster, but somebody who's calm and data-based, and they'll teach you, talk you off the ledge, they tend to keep you in the market. They tend to say, don't get out, don't get out, don't get out. They don't call you up and go, I'll be scared. That's really one of the advantages, by the way, of like having a financial advisor. I know some people look at that and they say, well, with no, no point paying 1%, or like half a percent of my total assets for a f financial advisor just to buy ETFs and index funds. It's really just to save you from yourself. If you have the, the self-control not to sell or panic and just keep buying, you, you probably don't need one, okay? As long as you're properly diversified, you're gonna be okay. It's to, it's to help the people who see the market drop and just need to click sell and they think they could time the market and then buy back in cheaper. It's just having that barrier of, of you know, a person that you could call and say, hey, I'm panicking, what should I do? And have them talk you off the ledge. And like I said, this is also one of the reasons why it's so important to keep a consistent income, whether that's working a part-time job, getting a side hustle, working on your own business, do something to make more money. And that way you just keep buying. The more you invest, the better. Every day there's clickbait that says, economists predicting the end of the world. You know, quickly, read my those. article. Those guys are my favorite because whenever they're wrong, they go, oh, we missed a calculation. We're off by a few years. We'll be back. And I go, okay, so I guess it wasn't the end of the world. Yeah. Reminds me of 2012. Remember that December 21st, 2012? Everyone said the world was going to end that day because, like, the Mayan calendar ended on that. And, you know, and, and people were legit planning their lives around the end of the world. They were like, well, no point saving because the, the world's going to end in uh, 30 days. So, you know, hey, I will just may as well just enjoy it now. And the world didn't end. And then they went back and was like, oh, well, actually, I think we miscalculated this. And it, it, it's not going to happen for another time in the future. And now they just kick the can down the road. And it's like, oh, that time in the future, the world's going to end. So it's just, you know, just plan that most likely you're going to be here tomorrow and the day after that and the day after that and the day after that. Just, just plan long term is what I'm saying. Last time we saw a major correction in the market was uh, 2008, and the Dow took a dive. It took a dive off a cliff down to from from uh, I think it was about 14, and it went down to 68. It went by basically in half, and that scared the crap out of people. Yeah, the issue is going to be that this is going to happen at some point again in the future. There is going to be most likely a big correction. 
and everyone sitting on the sidelines is going to say, oh, I knew it, I was right, I did everything correctly, but are they going to buy in? Th that, that's the, the hardest part is when you are right for something like that, and the market does correct quite a substantial amount. Do you have the courage to be able to buy in? And then what happens if you buy in and it drops even more? It's really hard to time the market for those reasons of like, can you time the top and then can you time the bottom? And how close can you get to both of them to actually make a profit? It's really, really, really difficult, if not impossible, to consistently do. If you do it once or twice, I would chalk that up to luck. And you know what I did? I scraped every dollar I could and I bought more. It's on sale, half off. You know, one more video I want to comment on from Dave Ramsey is his definition of broke, which... I find incredibly interesting. Just watch this. For me, a broke person is somebody who is not financially responsible. And sometimes I will say, Dave, it's hard to know because unless you know this person, you know, on that financial level, you may not know how they handle their money. But if you see them pull out a credit card when it's time to pay for dinner. Oh, well, by that definition, I am probably the brokest of broke. I, I, I have not used a debit card in probably over a decade at this point. No need to, just put everything on a credit card, pay it off in full. Yeah, I reach for the credit card. Every single time the uh, the check comes, always gonna be a credit card, never gonna be a debit card. May as well get the points back. I'm spending the money anyway. May as well get a you know, 5% cash back on dining, fine. If you're bling bling, you are driving cars that don't fit the neighborhood, meaning they're too nice. You know, you got two $60,000 cars sitting in front of a $400,000 house. <laughs> You're broke. Yeah, I would say it really just depends on quite a few factors. If it's like, how much money do you make? If you make a million dollars a year and you spend a million dollars a year, but that spending is discretionary, I wouldn't quite say you're broke because your discretionary spending is, is high, sure. But, you know, yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, there are different levels of brokenness. It's like, are you broke because you make no money, but you're doing your best to try to save? Are you broke because you make a hundred grand a year and you know you spend a little bit more of that to stay afloat to impress others? I would really say what you got to look at instead of focusing on the broke, focus on the people who maybe have a, a low debt to income, maybe save 25% of their money, maybe think long term. I think those are the people that uh, you ought to probably listen to. And here's the thing: most people that aren't broke don't give a crap what you think. Broke people care deeply about what you think. That is really, really, really true. Because uh, I, I've noticed that when you have a certain level of income or certain savings or you, you've had certain accomplishments, what other people say affects you a lot less because you just have a lot less to prove. There's, there's nothing you're trying to like, you know, show in front of other people and show off and trying to like brag. It's like really the most successful people out there never brag. They, they rarely tend to talk about themselves. Uh, they're more interested in hearing what other people say. They're a lot more reserved about their accomplishments. The people bragging, the people who love to talk about themselves, usually those are the ones who have the most to prove to other people. And here's the other thing. Here's what broke people are. Most people, that's broke people. 78% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. That's eight out of 10 houses on your street are spending everything they make to stay afloat. Yeah, see the thing is, I heard this a while ago. If you want average results, listen to the average person. You really have to step outside of your comfort zone and do something different to get a different result. I know it sounds like, ah, uh, you know, common sense, but it's true. Like if you ask the average person their advice on what they would do, it's probably gonna be wrong. It's probably gonna get you the same results you're already getting. So you have to go above and beyond. Like you have to really go for the outliers and figure out what are they doing? Why are they more successful than the average? Uh, how could I implement some of those things in my own life? You got to do something different if you want different results. Listen, when I go by uh, apartment complexes yeah. and I see... Yeah, they're sitting you in know, a stinking apartment complex and there's a $40,000 car sitting out there. I'm like, this isn't That is definitely broke people. Yeah, it A hundred percent, that's broke people. It was funny. I don't know if this is like too personal, but I saw Dave Ramsey's license plate and it just says zero debt. Amazing. So if you're driving around Tennessee and you see zero debt... It could be Dave Ramsey. There you go. Yeah, so the answer is don't listen to most people. And really, you get to know someone well enough, you actually know what their net worth is. Mm -hmm. You go, this guy's 35 years old. He's got a $2 million net worth. Okay, that's a guy you can listen to. When you line that up, that person is not spending the way you think that 
a quote, rich person should spend. No. They're just not. Oh, definitely not. No, in most cases, the people who have a net worth over a million dollars, they save very diligently. I mean, I mean, that's the top of their priorities, not like showing off, not buying things for the sake of buying things. It's almost always just saving. Even if they're making a substantial income, they live off very little. We, we've had quite a few people on the podcast who make five to like $20 million a year. And their personal spending is like 150 grand. We had one guy uh, who, He's probably making five to ten million dollars a year all in, living with roommates because it's cheaper. Because he's like, I, I need the whole house to myself, and I'm, I'm only there half the time, so like, I may as well just split the cost. That's a dude making millions of dollars a year. Is still focused on the small things that just make a difference over time. So I'm not saying you have to live with roommates making ten million dollars a year, but it does help. That's what we're looking at. It's, yeah. it's a proof text in the marketplace. As in business, we would call it best practices. Right. I want to follow someone that has a series of habits that has caused them to win in this particular area of my life. I'm concerned about. Yes. So let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. Again, thank you to Nick Steve for sponsoring today's video. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't done that already because it is free. Thanks so much and until next time.